what the fuck? George Bush does not care about black people. Nigga, please. The only black person this male has ever cared about elevating is himself. Kanye West does not care about black people. Kanye West doesn't care about black people. So this was a very impromptu video. I did a TikTok live and got subsequently banned on TikTok for doing a live like this. But I have so many opinions and so many feelings about this Kanye West situation. Um, and I'll kind of quickly go into what's going on if you've been living under a rock or you just choose not to engage with his bullshit, which I commend you. But um, I just wanted to make a motherfucking video about it because i have so many things and i think it it serves as such a great sociological foil to talk about stuff about through this through him through his existence through what he promotes and so we're gonna do just that also i'm feeling i'm about to read so i'm about to read a bit no just kidding that's why i have my glasses so yeah anyway so first things first let's get the business out of the way hi my name is madison and welcome to the madison channel if you are new here please like subscribe hit the bell notification comment leave a comment down below and watch all my ads please because a girl is newly monetized and i'm trying to you know yeah get that cheddar if you know what i mean sorry i'm so sorry um and if you're returning I love you so much. Thank you for returning. And we are doing another just like impromptu video where I'm just getting my feelings out. This is definitely a rant. And yeah, there's a structure in the madness, but it, this is a rant. Also, I just wanted to say we are, you know, I'm inserting this video because it's topical um, this week. And we are going to continue with my purge videos for the rest of the month it doesn't seem like you guys are vibing with it i mean i can't even tell because people aren't even clicking to watch them to see if they like it the comments that i have gotten seems like it seems like people really fuck with them but i just don't think you guys want to click on them or you're scared i don't know i've gotten several different comments about being scared too scared to watch them Here's the thing, they're not scary, it's just me explaining very sillily and unofficially what goes on in the movie, and then I, you know, do a quick sociological breakdown about why I think the Purge movies are so relevant and so important, so please watch that series, because I spent a lot of time watching the movies and thinking about things and putting it together, and I hope you love them, um... But yeah, just, you know, I just want to create and foster community. Like I said, in my other videos, I don't want to make a mockery out of real true crime cases with real victims. So in October, I'm going to opt for doing a sociological commentary on a movie series or a franchise or director or something in the horror genre. So we can still get, you know, a little creeped out without like making a mockery of someone's actual fucking life. Um so yeah but so this is what we're gonna do every october but i hope i want you guys to get excited about it i want you guys to consume the content so i can know if you actually like it or hate it or whatever at this rate i don't know what's going on child but anyway if you haven't watched it watch it i promise it's good for me it's good for you it's chicken soup for the soul um yeah so moving on um this is going to be smack dab in the middle of me finishing out the series or whatever of the purge movies the next week i'm going to be dropping the purge anarchy video and then i'm going to do a combined video with purge electioneer and purge um forever purge so anyway just some updates for the channel for you then in november we're going back straight into true crime and we're going to center the whole month around indigenous people and native americans because obviously thanksgiving but that's some things to look forward to in the horizon but that's the end of my housekeeping in terms of this let's get into the rant let's get into i just want to quickly shout out my sister and this absolutely gorgeous dream journal it is a 12 week guided dream journal that has amazing prompts it is absolutely super comprehensive to use and super high quality highly highly recommend it if you're interested in this hit my amazon storefront link in the bio so you can purchase it and try it out hope you love it
So first and foremost, what I want to just say right out the bat that I've been gritting my teeth so hard watching this story unfold as to not say anything. I have a TikTok. We're almost 100,000 strong. And I am very, very vocal about a lot of just pop culture stuff. I did a whole thing about the Ray J, Kim K, sex tape contract thing that happened a few months ago. I've done a lot of commentary on different things um, in the in the media about celebrity and all sorts of stuff um, because I'm interested in that kind of thing as well as being interested in just true crime stuff. So I I have been gritting my teeth because this is something I would make a TikTok video about and. When it first came out that he did the White Lives Matter thing, I was like, oh, fuck. And then it just kind of was like, okay, yeah, we're just going to stop and we're not going to do it. And then he came back and doubled down and said BLM was a scam. And I was like, oh, I feel the need to clarify that statement, but we're not going to say anything because, you know, no. Black people on the internet have done, after the slavery was a choice and the MAGA hat, and especially after the failed election run, I feel like as a collective, a lot of black people have decided that like we should just never talk about him because clearly he's a stunt queen. He loves attention. He loves getting the attention of people. He needs it. He thrives off of that. And if we react, good or bad, he thrives off of the attention. But for me, it was like, Day after day after day after day after day. I mean, it's still going on today uh, while I'm filming this of just bullshit, 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 bullshit. To the point where when I found out he was doing that Tucker Carlson interview, I was like, okay, let me make some TikToks about what's gone not on and my opinions about the White Lives Matter tea and all of that because I just can't hold my tongue any longer. And the reality is... The what we're watching Kanye become, because uh, Kanye is a, a a fucking Republican man, or he's cosplaying as a fucking white Republican conservative man at this point. He just is. He is Clayton Bis- Bigsby from the, the Chappelle Show. We're in the right place. We're looking for Clayton Bigsby. Well, look no further, fella. You found me. Uh, Clayton Bigsby, the author. What, you don't think I can write them books? Just because I'm blind don't mean I'm dumb. How could this have happened? A black white supremacist. So he, he is giving extremist white supremacist vibes and that's just where he's at in his life and we shouldn't just try and revel in the past with him and be like oh but he said the George Bush doesn't care about black people thing. Uh, honey, that was so long ago this nigga doesn't even that part of him has been long dead for so long so for us to like hope for that to come back it's just not realistic and we just need to leave him where he's at but that doesn't mean we can't critique him and that doesn't mean we we shouldn't be allowed to critique him and that doesn't mean we shouldn't have opinions about how he's moving because it, it, it what he's positioning himself as as a cultural figure by making this shift to being conservative is at the base level, super fucking interesting. Um, And it's a conversation about black capitalism, mental health, um, internalized racism, white supremacy. I mean, the whole gambit is in this situation. And so I just wanted to make a video about it. So I am. This is my YouTube channel and I can do what the fuck I want to do. So I'm doing it. Anyway, that's my introduction. I never was a Kanye stan, but I always appreciated his art. I mean, I grew up while he was, you know, rising to stardom, his college dropout, graduation, you know, all of those things, like all of those albums mean so much to me. Um, but not super, super, like, he's not on the level. His albums don't mean as much to me as, like, Erica Badu's album. Now, well, that's someone I could fuck with. But they have, they are literally the soundtrack of my young adult life, period. We can't say he doesn't make good music. We can't say he hasn't made iconic songs. And so we'll kind of just leave it there. I'm not a stan, never have been, but I can recognize that he's made some great classic hits. 
period. Um, and I saw him once at FYF one year. I think it was 2015 or something. And it was sick as fuck. But that was before the Pablo tour. That was before everything started to crumble. So anyway, it was great to see him then. I, I don't have to pay for a ticket now. I've seen him. Never going to pay for anything regarding him ever again. Um, he's dead to me. Um, but yeah, personal opinion, I guess kind of in the middle, skewing positively. Okay, here's a quick, quick, quick breakdown. If you're living under a rock, this is what happened with Kanye and why everyone's talking about him. So Paris Fashion Week just happened and Kanye had a pop-up show where he designed these shirts for Yeezy that say White Lives Matter in the back. And they have different, like, like the Pope or, like, different people in the front. And then on the back, it says White Lives Matter. It really blew up after a Black Vogue editor, Gabrielle Karif Johnson, basically made this beautiful statement about her feelings and the emotions in the room, as well as Jaden Smith tweeting that he had to dip out of the show because it was just like too toxic and he said black lives matter and he's just like i didn't fuck with it so boom the picture of him and candace owens hits the critique from gabriella 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 gabrielle karifa johnson and jaden smith tweets tweets hit boom and then it just starts the fallout from there i want to focus some time on what uh miss karifa johnson said because honestly she couldn't have said it better. She was so eloquent with how she broke it piece by piece, her emotions and what she was writing and the true critique of the art that he was trying to display because what a lot of Kanye stands like to do is say, well, he's an artist. He's an artistic genius. You don't get it. It's above you. It's above you. Um, art is polarizing. He's just, you know, doing an artistic thing. And what Miss Karifa Johnson was saying was like, baby, there was no art in this. This is not high art. This is not it at all. This is a man who loves shock value, who loves attention. And it was, he ended up being absolutely hurtful and completely racist in what his messaging for this fucking um, fashion show turned out to be. And we'll get into that. We'll, we'll get into the racist part. We'll get into all of that part. But what Karif, Miss Karifa Johnson really said was, she even threw Kanye a bone. She said, you know what, during the MAGA hat stuff and what he was trying to do or surrounding free speech with the MAGA hat as an artistic thing, it made more sense than these White Lives Matter shirts. Now, here's her breakdown. Basically, what she took from the MAGA hat saga was that Kanye West was making a statement that wearing uh, that Donald Trump wearing and existing and wearing the MAGA hat versus himself as a black rapper wearing the MAGA hat were two different things and he was subverting the meaning of the MAGA hat while also uplifting his right for free speech and all of these things and that very well is true because fundamentally it is a different conversation when the hat is worn by Trump versus when the hat is worn by Kanye. Um, Did she agree? She she then said, you know, did I think the art was good? Did I agree with it? No, I did not. But I could see at least what could be taken inklings of what you were trying to do. And that could be taken in as a subversive artistic point of view with the hat. She was like, (laughs) That is subverting an object versus trying to subvert an idea, an ideology, which is unsubvertible, (laughs) actually, in American society. And so not only was the art bad, not only were the shirts ugly, not only were what you were trying to do not a success in terms of subversion in the art world, um, it just was at the core, coonish, and hurtful and I think that that's something that you know um Kanye loves to ignore I mean he he has hurt the black community to the umpteenth degree it's sad to watch him like this it's sad to see him embarrass himself and us like this it's hurtful what he's promoting now it's hurtful what he's speaking on now and somebody who doesn't have the wherewithal the intellect to at all speak on these topics in the way that he claims that he can 
and tries to do and he ends up doing a lot of harm basically she did that critique it was beautifully it was well accepted and well said and kanya basically posted her on his page and basically of course what one thing kanya will do is make fun of a black woman so he posted her on his page and basically called her out for not being a fashionable person and just being really shady and the whole fashion world including namely people like Gigi Hadid and all of these really important white figures came to her, Gabrielle's defense and was like, you know what, Kanye, you're a narcissist. All these people were dragging him. He was getting dragged up and down the timeline. And he started to realize, oh shit, this didn't play. I overplayed my hand. She actually has a support system in the fashion industry with people that I'm trying to rub shoulders with. So I kind of need to walk it back. They had an offline chat. He basically kind of apologized, but didn't really. And that was that with Miss Karifa Johnson. There was issues with him bringing up Virgil with the creative director of Supreme. And they had words and they had a lot of words. Kanye posted their text, but basically the some a summed up situation is Kanye was exposed for not being as close to Virgil as he claims during the time of Virgil's sickness and not being a good friend and being shady and stuff like that. Um, and that was exposed. And then, you know, different people came out to drag him. Um, Kanye then doubled down and basically said Black Lives Matter was a scam. And then he just started making these bold ass statements that basically now are ending in a lot of anti-semitism he went on tucker carlson and you know it's just a big amalgamation of the same shit that happened with the slavery was a choice and him running for president it's just a mess it's a cry for help it's a cry for attention who knows at this point who cares at this point um but i that's basically the very slim gist of what happened okay okay so let me set the stage for let's my first point of contention white lives matter okay so kanye said that he made that shirt because black lives matter is a scam now follow me here sociologically Context is all, okay? Context will tell you the underlining meaning of what someone is trying to say or what someone is walking around saying, right? And we have to take the context for what Kanye has shown us over the recent years. The conservative political run in the election, the MAGA hat, the loving on Trump, um, the pro-life speech, now this um the always bullying black women all sorts of stuff i mean his relationship with the kardashians the list goes on and on right that's kanye's context for which he's making the statement black lives matter is a scam as an organization now i see a lot of my faves making a good point that only an idiot will will not be able to understand that black lives matter as a powerful liberating statement and rallying cry is not fucked up but the organization for which organized underneath that rallying cry is fucked up and there's a lots of proof of that but from the direction through the context that kanye has showed us okay he's coming from black lives matter is a scam from the right and i'm coming from black lives matter as an organization is a scam from the left He's saying the entire thing is a scam. I'm saying the organization is corrupt for several notable reasons. He's saying by way of making White Lives Matter shirts that the existence of Black Lives Matter inherently threatens White Lives Mattering in this country. And I'm saying that white lives have always mattered in this country. So we're still ending up with in the in the Venn diagram of black BLM as an org is a scam and has scammed people. This is a middle section of the Venn diagram. Okay? But 
at the end of the day, we're attacking it from different positionings, which means different, which ends up meaning different things fundamentally. I'm critiquing an organization that has scam people. He's he's belittling a movement that centers blackness and black people based on the context he's shown us. Okay, so that's what I mean by context provides all the things that aren't being said in a statement. And me saying BLM is a scam and him saying BLM is is a scam fundamentally means two different things. Just like, um, you know, when liberals say or leftists say, the government can't be trusted and conservatives say the government can't be trusted. Same statement, two different veering off points. Do you know what I mean? I want to make that clear that, you know, him doubling down and saying that Black Lives Matter is a scam, there's truth to it. Does he have the brain capacity capacity or the intellect to be able to have the conversations that need to be had around that conversation? No. He's coming at it from the conservative angle, which is it's a direct threat to white lives mattering, which is just not true. Also, yeah, uh, another thing of, of on the white lives matter statement, white lives matter... I mean, white lives have always mattered in this society. And this is why um, Miss um, Karifa Johnson said that this was pure violence on the runway. And here we'll get into that now. This idea that we're seeing with right wing media of of leaning into white supremacy rhetoric and creating fear and uncertainty around this country and wokeness and, you know, critical race theory and all of these things. Kanye making these shirts is all centered in this inherent fear on the conservative white side that as society keeps progressing and allowing more people representation and allowing more things to be acceptable and allowing to accept more people as human beings fully fleshed and all that their way of life the white straight anglo-saxon way of life that supports and uplifts the white male's existence only is directly being threatened and is directly going to be attacked right and this is how they've always thought of it. You, they want to snuff out any, you know, anything, the Black Panther movement, any Black liberation movement, anything, because it is disrupting the status quo, which is that white people are the example, white people are the standard, and that is what it is. White straight people who are Christian are the standard. And so... You see all of this talk bubbling up at, you know, all these times in history. I mean, it's part of what what happened with the Nazis and the Jews and, you know, all the other people that the the Nazis killed by, uh, by, you know, as well as the Jews and stuff. It's all this right wing rhetoric that's really stemmed in fear because, you know, they there is an awareness of what was done to get this position in society. And to me, like I said in my Lake Lanier video, all debts, some debts are blood debts and they're scared because they're thinking that the time to pay those blood debts is coming up soon. And it is. This is what you might call an ongoing problem. I mean, pick your decade, pick your state, pick your degree of notoriety or obscurity. It's the same thing over and over and over again from the far right in the United States. And it swings back and forth from terroristic violence and murder to electoral politics to fantasies about racial purity to conspiracies about the Jews to disgust for democracy and a desire, sometimes an effort, to take and hold power by force, by force of arms, instead of through our democratic force of government. It keeps coming up. This is a recurring thing. A justification and a call for violence based on this insane paranoiac fantasy that white people are an endangered species as long as there are non-white people around. And any change in the ratio of white people to other people is a sure sign that the global plot to eliminate the white race is approaching its goal. And so white people need to buy guns and stand up and take our country back and make it great again, because otherwise white people are being replaced. And this weekend, it was 10 people killed in Buffalo, almost all of them 
elderly African Americans. And the shooter decorated his gun with the N-word and the 14-word slogan. And he posted his online manifesto about how white people are so endangered, how they're being replaced. And in August 2019, it was the shooting that killed 23 people, mostly Latinos, at a Walmart in El Paso, Texas. And in that case, that guy, too, posted his online manifesto about how white people are so endangered and how they're being replaced. And before that, it was April 2019. It was the killing in the synagogue in Poway, California, where the killer also posted his online manifesto about how white people are so endangered, how they're being replaced. And before that, it was March 2019. It was the guy in Christchurch, New Zealand, who killed 51 people in two different mosques. And he posted his online manifesto about how white people are so endangered and how they're being replaced. And before that, it was October 2018. It was 11 people killed at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, the shooter there posting all over right-wing social media sites about how white people are so endangered, about how they're being replaced. And before that, it was August 2017, those very fine people the former president talked about marching with tiki torches at Charlottesville, Virginia, a show of force, a white male phalanx shouting to the cameras as they marched about how white people are so endangered, how white people are being replaced. You will not replace us. Jews will not replace us. It is not a new concept. It's not even a new pretext, a new justification for violent racist terrorism. It has long been so. It is right now being newly popularized, newly mainstreamed by the biggest names in conservative media and even by the leadership of the Republican Party in Congress. But it is an old idea. It is an old and stupid idea. It is an old and stupid and dangerous idea. Old, stupid, and dangerous in equal measure. But now what do we do? Because there's a reason these white men keep killing black people and Jews and Latinos and Muslims in the largest numbers they can. And it is not just because they believe in this ideology and, in, and are inspired by it. They are. That's what's leading them to kill all these people. But beyond that, they keep doing this the way they're doing it because they're not only adherents of that ideology, they are evangelists for it as well. They want to spread this ideology to others. They want to make it famous. They want to make it popular. They want more white people to understand this concept and think this way and act like them because of it. That's why they all post these stupid manifestos online, these explanations of the supposed reasons for their murders. So we all have to learn about their asinine, sophomoric, puerile, soft-headed, pitiful little old theories. So we all have to take time to learn it, to understand it, to talk about it, so we can explain and understand why, why all those poor, beautiful little old ladies in Buffalo this weekend had to be murdered with an assault rifle while they were doing their grocery shopping. And I mean, what do you do? It doesn't help to pretend we don't know the motive for these repeated terroristic mass murders. They're part of a terrorist movement that is both murderous and seditious. And it has a very long history in this country, one that is surging anew in terms of its mainstream influence right now in our media and politics. Seeing that movement for what it is, seeing where it's taking hold and who's aiding and abetting it, that's valuable, if only for trying to head off the next inevitable one of these murderous attacks, ignoring why these guys are doing what they're doing and, and what they're citing as the pretextual justification for their actions. I mean... <laughs> It only excuses, for example, the conservative politicians and conservative TV shows that continue to spread this intellectual diarrhea, despite the death toll it has already racked up in all of these attacks. But it, it is nauseating, right? I mean, it is, to me at least, it is nauseating to be talking about their ideas at all, to be talking about the murderous fantasies they all share that they hope will inspire more killing. More attacks, more terrorism. If only they can just spread the word to enough white people. This is a problem not just about murder and violence, but about information. It is about finding a way to learn what's going on, learning enough to be sharp and real about what's happening online and what's happening in right-wing politics to activate these kinds of killers, while also, in so doing, not helping them spread the word, not helping them spread these ideas. 
How do you do that? But that whole idea and that inherent fear that we're working through that all of these things are like combining into is centered in the fucking replacement theory and the fucking replacement theory is this theory that all there that there come there's going to come a point in time when white people become the minority and there and we are all the the bipoc people the jewish people are going to replace them and that is what the agenda is at this point in time it's 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 just basically a fear it's nothing new it's something that white supremacists may, namely things organizations like the ku klux klan and what other white nationalists and neo-nazis have taken to heart all over the world for a long time it's a theory created by i think a french guy in the 1800s if i'm not mistaken Prisias and peyton gendron all three are white nationalists who committed mass murders of people of color but why did they do it? In this video, we discussed that. If you've been following the Buffalo shooting that happened in May 14th, 2022, then you might heard of the replacement theory by now. The replacement theory dates back to the 20th century. It was coined by a French novelist named Maurice Bars. But it was actually popularized in 2011 by Renard Camure, a French writer. In his essay, Le Grand Replacement, which means the great replacement, he states that the native white individuals being replaced in their own land by Africans and Middle Eastern people. In 2017, this theory has been popularized for white nationalists for an excuse to become anti-Semite. Now the theory has shifted to the Democratic Party is trying to receive third world immigrants votes to replace the white people from power. So my question to you is how often do you hear that white people are becoming the minority here in this country? It's an old theory. It's old, it's tired, it's through, but it's a part of every single thing that we do nowadays, especially currently. And so when I say that the white lives matter is reflective of the replacement theory, what I'm saying is it's the white lives matter being put on a shirt is a response to a fear that never existed that is cultivated and stoked by way of the replacement theory and how ingrained that is into all conservative politics okay so for kanye to say he's not trying to be hurtful for kanye to say all these things you can you can critique BLM without then having full white supremacist regalia um, and representation of white supremacist theory walking down a, a runway by way of you, you know? And so that's where the violence and the violent rhetoric starts coming in because this is clearly meant to embolden a super a certain group of people a certain population hence why he went to go to tugger carlson to have an interview after like right after he got off the plane from paris because he knows he knows the population he's trying to stoke up with these words and embolden with these words he knows that, you know, Van Lathan, the guy who um, checked Kanye in the TMZ video um, when he said slavery was a choice. He has a podcast and he basically was saying that, um, you know, two things are there, there's only two things that can be true at this point. Either Kanye is a fucking idiot or he's pure evil. Kanye's dumb as shit if he doesn't see that he's being used as a tool in the conservative party he's stupid as fuck for not realizing how having white lives matter shirt is really you know clanny um he's you know and being coonish isn't appealing and that he has a lot of internalized racism that he's not aware of you know is he that oblivious to what he's doing or is he intentional about he what he's doing in terms of triggering gaslighting and trying to disrupt the black race that he's a part of to make money and so van lathan basically was like it's one of these two things in either way it's terrible you, if this guy is that stupid or if he's that diabolical either way it sucks and it's stupid and it's either way it's just dark energy
period. So again, my point about the the white lives matter being inherently intrin- intrinsically connected to the replacement theory again is further proven correct by the Tucker Carlson interview what was said in the Tucker Carlson interview and the fact that he'd even go on Tucker Carlson to have an interview like that in the first fucking place is screams white supremacists as well as now the anti-semitic rhetoric about the jewish people being in control of the media the jewish people controlling the fashion industry and the jewish people are sending all of these people who are critiquing him so that he can lose his career and all of this stuff which is again a super intense anti-semitic fucking racist ass bullshit ass fucking opinion that's not new it's not revolutionary it is literally something that people have been saying since the fucking beginning of time that jewish people have some sort of cabal where they control the whole world and they control what we what we think in our media that we consume and they they have all this money and they're controlling us this is literally terminology uh, ideology that started fucking the world war ii in turn by way of nazis gassing jewish people and sending them to the ghettos like this is that terminology if you brought a newspaper from germany from that time it would be spewing the same thing that kanye is saying right now about jewish people and the in, in the entertainment industry and the media and all of this stuff it is virtually anti-semitic since the middle ages drawings haven't been so nice to a group of people unfairly slighted once or twice they were made to look like bad guys and that message carried over but it shouldn't really come as a surprise find out why before the time that pictures moved Cartoons lampooned and not the Jews Depicted big nose, hunched back and crude To be Jewish became taboo So when those pictures moved Bad guys got these nasty features through and through Children drink this poison juice It's no wonder that kids think that we're the bad guys When we're portrayed as a costume for a murder-driven wolf That's subtext It's not only our features Like sure if you Posters painting us as greedy sneaks made us a cast. Those images became a fixture shown to kids in motion pictures. Messages put in young minds designed to last and last. Even in the 1980s, a smurf fell in love with his money. His name was Gargamel, and he came straight from a poster. He's greedy and hunchback, and check out the nose. A stinky character in magazines dominates those racist memes. Copycats make it the most viewed. Because it's used to to say that Jewish people are controlling our stuff in, in, in a bad, in a negative way. And they're evil with what they're making us look into and what they're making us watch. And they should be attacked on the basis that they're Jewish. That is just what it is. So, again, there's all of these things that are kind of lining up together where it's like Kanye West is Clayton B- Bigsby. Kanye West is a coon and a Klansman. It, it, he's a racist, conservative white man cosplaying as a black rapper. That is what has happened. That is what we're watching. This is what we're seeing. The, ev- the evolution, like one of those Animorph books, the evolution of Kanye into, I wish someone would do that, into a full-on Klansman. You know, obviously I'm being facetious and stuff, but it's like, you know what I mean? Like the rhetoric, all of this stuff, it's not new. It's not creative. I mean, white people are so, ciao. 
conservative white people are so ridiculous that they still get riled up by the same five things that have always riled white people up since the beginning of time racism sexism uh christianity and other versus other religions child like how is it that the same fucking bullshit theories based in pseudoscience and racist science that white people created to make sure that they were thought to be the best and the smartest and the most civilized. How are, How is any of this ideology still being taken seriously to this day? And not just taken seriously, but taken so seriously that people are fully mobilizing behind it still. It's tired, it's late, you're a loser, and that's just the truth. My second point is is this and it's gonna piss some people off but we're gonna talk about black capitalism and how it won't save us but we're gonna really talk about it because lots of creators on youtube and stuff like to talk about this but they don't like to talk about it so let's talk about it okay Jay-Z was under fire recently earlier in the summer for being on one of those, you know, Twitter hangout things with DJ Khaled. And he basically was on there and basically was asked about the fact that people, you know, some of his biggest critiques is that he's a black capitalist and stuff like that. And he promotes black capitalism and stuff like that. And he basically was like, they try to, you know, they try to take us down, like, you know, as when a black man makes it, now him making it is bad, and you guys, you know, black people, we have to stop with this crabs in a barrel mentality, capitalism is a made up word, all of this stuff, I'll, I'll try and see if I can clip it in here. By the bootstraps, and you can make yourself, you can make it in America, all these, these lies that America told us our whole life, um, and then when we start getting it, they try to lock us out of it. They start inventing words like, you know, capitalists and, you know, things like that. I mean, you know, we've been called and monkeys. I don't care. I don't, th- those words y'all come up with, y'all got to come with strong. But basically, he was under fire for that because it, it, we're going to peel apart and get to Kanye. But his response was one of somebody, again, who doesn't necessarily have the appropriate intellect to approach the conversation in a real productive way now everyone loves jay-z i love him i love beyonce but the main critique especially nowadays that they get is that they are supporting black capitalism and black capitalism won't save us and they're pushing black capitalism it's 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 which okay and here's why it's bad (laughs) because capitalism is literally the economic arm of white supremacy at least capitalism as it's been practiced by European nations and forced upon other nations in the world, in society, okay? You're not going to tell me the same economic ideology that sold a someone that looked like me like a piece of cattle is going to save me. Do you, do you that, And that's the thing that they're not really following that thread, you know what I mean? It's like, you aren't going to sit here and tell me that the, the, that the way in which I was seen as property and cattle and subhuman and in the, the whole system for which I was bought and sold and my ancestors were bought and sold is something that is going to ever be liberating, revolutionary to the black situation in this country and to think it and to spread that and to think that is is tired and through it's dumb as hell and it's just not reality because as long as capitalism as it exists in terms of what we're experiencing in this country profits over people money 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 all of this kind of thing as long as it exists like that we will never be free like we will never we will never be free because the struggle for class and being anti-capitalism is inherently infused into the fight for civil rights right 
People like Jay-Z, people like Diddy, people like Kanye have been cosplaying recently as these black capitalists who are trying to, you know, do stuff and really help the black community and da 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 and all of this stuff. It's all a smoke, it's a smoke show. It's a smoke show. Jay-Z is now cosplaying as um, Basquiat. Like, come on. Like, it's a smoke show. It's a look. It's it's an illusion. Because the reality that a lot of these men don't want to sit down and actually realize is a lot of these thinkers and black liberation people that they cosplay as on the day-to-day would not be fucking with these people. Asada Shakur would not be fucking with Jay-Z. Fred Hampton, please. Are you kidding me? Do you think Fred Hampton would look at Jay-Z and the amount of wealth he's hoarding for himself and his family and say, you know what? That's something to strive for. No. But the sad part is they're all either exiled. All our leaders like that are exiled in jail or fucking assassinated. So people like Jay-Z can put on a costume and capitalize off the look of being adjacent to black liberation while still feeding us the same fucking poison like capitalism and being a capitalist. Because it's not going to save us. Inherently, capitalism is like a pyramid scheme. And, and the thing that keeps you going and hope is is a hope of the American dream, which is a carrot that keeps keep that keeps getting, you know, dangled in front of you. Capitalism is fundamentally a pyramid scheme. And if you ain't at the top, baby, you're at the bottom and you're being exploited. So for Jay-Z to sit there and say, you know, black capitalism, you, as soon as a black man is making it, that is that you guys want to say that being a cap being a black capitalist is bad. Da 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 da. These are ideologies, these are things and theories that have been fleshed out over time over years by the very people that you cosplay as. The black dollar and buying black isn't what's going to save us. It's about redirecting our communities into collectivism. It's about trying to get back and solve our community issues in community. It's about thinking about your fellow man. It's about sharing. It's about caring about your fellow man. And capitalism thrives in a society where everyone is individualistic. It's that thing of like how Jay-Z was it was so down for Kaepernick and then as soon as he got a fat check from the NFL to hook up the Super Bowl then now he's standing with the NFL and by him getting a check somehow that's supposed to help the average black person like me it's not it's not because if any and, and you know let's you know go back to Kanye and stuff because you know That Jay-Z thing has been eating at my brain for such a long time. But in Kanye's case, what he always talks about and what it always goes back to, because he is a known flip-flopper. He's super Klansman one day. Then he's black, black, my kids are black. My wife is keeping my black children away from me. Black power, I'm a black dad. The next day. So it's really hard to follow. And he's just erratic as fuck. But... In Kanye's case, he's always talking about the black dollar and how we don't own anything and how he's trying to bust down doors in the fashion industry so we can own stuff and so we can be represented properly and all of this stuff. That's always the rhetoric around what he's saying, right? But at the end of the day, can we sit here and think about any of the time, like, has he used some of that $3 billion he's he's bragged about multiple times? to pay some people's rent or um eliminate a certain a few thousand people's student debt loans has he created a community garden in different communities to help promote healthy eating in our communities as well as collectivism has he has he you know there's so has he connected with grassroots organizations to help the black community in the ways that it needs to be helped fuck no because it's all about him here's what gets me 
he wants he keeps calling these protests for adidas and nike and all of these fashion places that he can't seem to get to the upper echelon of he keeps begging the black community to boycott these companies without understanding that a true protest a true boycott is for a collective reason he wants me to boycott Nike's because Nike's didn't Nike didn't treat him correctly. And so he wants me to not buy Nike's for him so that he, we can strong arm Nike to give him more money. Does that make sense to anyone? He wants the black entire black community to be his for hire not even for money protesters for all of his personal vendettas when he is so thirsty for white validation that he continues to go and bring his designs to these white fashion houses and these white companies expecting a different result and when he always gets dogged the fuck out as he always does he runs with his tail behind in between his legs and begs the black community to boycott them and to talk about this and to look at this issue and i'm trying i'm a black man trying to make it so you should just endlessly support me but none of your causes have anything to do with the collective situation of the black community and so when we talk black capitalism that is black capitalism it is a bunch of black men who are lucky enough to be able to make a lot of money who have a lot of access who have a big platform telling poor black people that they need to bootstrap it and get themselves out of poverty by only supporting black businesses honey that's not the way we are far past the even advent or the conversation of boot lifting people by their bootstraps even working anymore. This country is an empire in decline. And we are more and more people are getting screwed than being helped and uplifted by this country, which means there's more and more people on the side every day of eating the rich and dismantling this shit from the ground up okay so what i think us as a collective when we talk about celebrity when we talk about these people but we also want to peddle in leftist politics spaces is you need to remember that when people say eat the rich that means beyonce that means rihanna that means jay-z that means kanye that means the rich period I guess in conclusion, what I want to say is this. In America, capitalism is king, which means money is power. And these men like Jay-Z, Diddy, Kanye, and Kanye specifically right now, who were successful at making money in one field because they made so much money, that title of being a genius or successful transfers into all aspects of life so they are able to be invited into spaces that most people like us like me like other people who don't have that money but do possess the vernacular and the intellect that do possess the vernacular and the intellect to really have the conversations that could change the world we don't get into the rooms where the world-changing people are are there. We don't get into those rooms because we don't have that kind of money. Why is the Trump administration talking to Ice Cube about anything? We should be talking and raising up black intellect the black intellect the black intellect okay the black intellect is everything it is key and for those who have been organizing for those who are even paying this kanye mess no mind the reality is you know i you're amazing keep doing what you're doing because we will survive whatever comes our way we are survivors that's the truth but what pisses me off is that people like Kanye are able to have such an effect on our day-to-day -day life without us realizing it because he has money. And it's on purpose. They don't want 
the black intellect in the room where they're making the laws. They don't want the black intellect in the room when they're, you know, really talking about reform and police reform and shit like that. It's all a game. It's all a facade to them. That's why only rappers or actors get asked the important questions. They're not asking the average Joe to come and talk to them for real. It's a smoke screen. It's a smoke show. So what really pisses me off about this Kanye situation is, you know, he gets invited into these rooms when he has self-admittedly said he doesn't read. He's never read a book in his life. You know, what I imagine Kanye's brain and the, the contents of Kanye's brain really being is that monkey with symbols clapping. With like two marbles click clacking around. That's it. And also, while we're here, fucking miss me with the mental illness talk, okay? Yes, he's bipolar. Yes, 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 yes. But being mentally ill is not an excuse to be a shitty person. Period. That's just a point blank period. That's the truth. Being mentally ill is not an excuse anymore. If you are a grown adult like Kanye is, especially if you are a wealthy grown adult like Kanye is with children and you do not want to seek help and you don't want to get better and get more stable for your children, I can't help you. I have no sympathy for you because there's plenty of people who are bipolar who are struggling to even afford the opportunity to have a therapist, to be on medication, who are able to move in their day-to-day lives and are managing on their own. And you have all the access in the world and all the money in the world and yet you insist on being a fucking idiot. Fuck you, Kanye West. I'm done. And I guess... Yeah, that's all I really have to say. Uh, Like and comment the video, share the video, all of the tea with the video. I, um, if you're new here, I hope you watch the ads. Please subscribe, please stay. We usually do true crime content. Like I said, purge content coming back next week. So be ready for that. And also, um, all my socials are in the description. Um, follow me on TikTok, follow me on Instagram. Look at shop my Amazon storefront, all of the things. And I guess... Without further ado, Black Lives Matter and Free Palestine until it's backwards. Love you.